Welcome back to another Brionis Breakdown. In this video, we're going to be talking about the forehand topspin attack. And we're going to be looking at some of the top pros. We got the Johns and Riley Newman and Thomas Wilson. And after this, we're going to hop on the court to show you exactly how you can improve your forehand attack as well. Without further ado, let's jump right in. All right, here we go. We are at the Hyundai Masters and this is championship um, game here. First game here. Championship Sunday. Yeah, not a long point here but we are going to break it down. Ugh. Yeah, definitely shorter. Dirty. Point. Definitely short, shorter point. Shout out to Thomas Wilson with a 12 mil. Mm -hmm. At 12 mil, but here we go. We got uh, Ben John serving here. Okay. Got Riley with the return there, slice return. All right. First and foremost, just look at this get that Riley that Riley has. Off the net, jumps into his toes, has been creeping right in his face and still hits a great shot. Yeah. Right to Colin, that's that's pretty damn impressive. So yeah, let's actually talk about um, Ben's coming in here. So this is really important too. Um, as this return is coming back to Colin here, um, something that's super important. I see lower levels and also intermediate levels make this mistake all the time, but watching your partner hit the third, super important. We can see mm -hmm. Ben. Now he looks casually coming in. I also think personally Ben should be fine for wearing black and green socks at an all white tournament, but that's uh, that's for another conversation. Okay. Here we go. There you go. So <laughs> here's the drop here and you will see Ben. He was about to split step there, but you see mm -hmm. it hit the net and you can see him actually be more aggressive. Yep. Start towards mm -hmm. the middle. Mm -hmm. So uh, Riley hits that top spin to keep calling back. Now in this situation, I, I get asked about this all the time, Caden, but I want your thoughts on this. Um, here's the ball and you're already up a little bit, you know, or in this case, a lot ahead of your partner and your partner is still back. So do you stay up here or do you retreat, right? We get this question a lot, Yeah. right? Yeah, uh, so. it, that, that entirely depends on your trust of your partner, right? If I'm playing with you, Jordan, I'm probably gonna take a step back, just kidding. No, but, but in all honesty, right? If you trust that your partner has good thirds and good fifths, right? Like, I think Ben trusts Colin here pretty, uh, pretty well, so I would yeah. say he's probably gonna stay put, right? Let's see. Mm, yeah. makes uh takes okay takes a little step back right and then when he realizes that maybe uh colin popped one up a little bit higher than he would have liked he does start to move back yeah right but so yeah so that that retreating and just being aware of the recognition and this is why it's really important to watch it off your partner's paddle yeah here ben is already looking at trajectory yep off the bat and you can see he stays yeah. there, and as soon as he sees Riley kind of step I mean, in with the paddle high. Yeah, he takes like two or three steps, and look mm -hmm. at his split. So if it yeah. does come to him, this ready is the go. position, ready to go. Look how low his paddle is, too. Yeah. And then we got Colin attempting another drop in. Mm -hmm. And now they move forward together. As yeah, and, and, and by the way, this is a fairly good drop. Now, looking at this again, Caden. Mm-hmm. You know, here's some D, Colin plays a good drop. I mean, at any level, I would say, you know, this is a fairly good drop. And then Thomas just reels it yeah, down the middle. What do you think um, could be done differently, Caden? Or, I mean, this is the top, top level. What do you I think just, they're thinking here? I just think Thomas executed this point absolutely perfectly. Go in slow-mo, here we go, you ready? Okay, so first things first thomas kind of has the bigger wind up to kind of show like hey you guys are in trouble okay this yeah. is not going to be just some silly little dink that i'm about to hit i'm going to force pressure on you guys all right yeah if you look at ben's positioning the first thing that you think of is like okay there's an opening i'm gonna go down this spot right down the line you're yep saying. right and look how thomas kind of holds his paddle like he's gonna go down his line all right, and if you actually watch Ben's positioning, as he split steps, his right knee kind of turns in towards the sideline, right? 
Ooh, he that. turns in. Yeah. And that is Thomas's kind of indicator of like, I'm going to fake him out and make him think I'm going down his line because obviously he's giving me a lot of this space. And as I hold this, I'm just going to roll it down the middle because look at, look at Ben. He's completely full. Yeah. So Ben was definitely covering line in this situation. And you have to as a player. And you, you have, have to. to. And we talked about that. But let's, let's just see um, on this uh, fourth shot or not fourth shot on this whatever sixth or eighth or whatever shot this is it's a drop coming in but one thing that thomas does really well he lets the ball come to the apex and that's mm -hmm. super important yeah and he's it at its highest point yep and at this point here ben does he is expecting line you can see what what kaden was talking about he flexes his right knee in looking for line and colin here is actually in a fairly good position but do you think at a high level would you say Colin has to be a little bit over to the left, or what would you say there, Kaden? That's a tough ball. Yes and no. Um, I think Colin uh, could would typically expect Ben to kind of cover that. Yeah. Um, but I think because Thomas disguised it so well, Ben was fully committed and yeah. set on covering that line. So as soon as it didn't go there, I think... Ben kind of just said, hey, you know what? I'm going to leave that for Colin. Yeah. And if I am Colin, no matter whether I'm playing with Ben Johns or my little sister, I'm yeah. probably going to be moving over middle a little bit more. And I'd rather give him the angled shot than the middle. Yeah. Personally. And, yeah. And I, I would I would kind of classify this more as a, a forced yeah. error or point. And it's not really an error here, but... I think Ben is in a fairly good position, uh, Colin. And here's the thing with your forehand attacks, everybody. Um, this is why it's so important to put pressure. And if you don't have a good topspin forehand right now, we're going to be hopping on the court in a bit. But, um, you know, in this situation, as we talked about, Ben is expecting line. I guarantee you, we watch this back. Thomas has gone down the line multiple times already. For sure. Um, so at the highest levels, even whatever level you're at, um, you know, it's it's important to have a variety of locations um, because in this case, if Thomas never went down the line, Ben wouldn't even, you know, he wouldn't even cover line. But I guarantee you, because of Thomas's, you know, different shots, um, super important. Yeah. Thomas's forehand is lethal. Yeah. Absolutely lethal. So again, we're going to watch this uh, point uh, all the way through, and then we're going to hop on the court. So stay tuned here. Slice return here. Again, net tipper. Ben chooses to stay. Ooh. Okay. All right. Get some. So again, forehand, super important. We're going to hop on the court now and show you exactly how you can be offensive, just like Thomas, um, on your forehand. Yep. Okay, so let's talk about that filthy forehand topspin shot that Thomas Wilson did hit. First things first, I have to set up my feet properly so I can create the space that I need for contact. Um, what does that mean? Maybe I have to take a, a shuffle step, an adjustment step, um, just so I can have this ball out in front of my body because if it is in any other spot, it does get a little bit more difficult. Um, having this contact point allows me to be offensive, not only with being more aggressive on the ball that I hit, but also location. So when I am getting set up, this contact point is number one. Secondly, hitting the ball in the apex. What is the apex? That is the highest point of contact for the ball. So when that ball bounces upward, and as it's starting to kind of sit there, that is your apex, and you typically want to be attacking that ball in the apex because, like I said, it's the highest point of contact, and you're dealing with the highest point of the net here. So you want that high point of contact for you to be able to roll and still be able to keep down. Now let's talk about our technique of the swing. Um, notice Thomas had a little bit more of a windup, but the main thing that you should look for in his swing is that paddle head being down, right? So because he has that windup that is used for a little bit more deception, um, maybe he's using it for rhythm and timing, but as you notice, when he's taking his swing, his paddle head is downward and he has his paddle set up below the ball so he can brush up on it for topspin to be aggressive. Um, so to simplify things, you can start with your paddle here, paddle head down immediately. Um, as you guys get a little bit better at it, you can add a little bit of, of wind up just for maybe a more deception or just to kind of throw your opponents off. So it 
could wind up. It could start just here, but it has to be downward so you can brush upward on that ball. Lastly, let's talk about our follow through and our finish. Uh, we've set everything up here. Now we need to talk about where we're finishing our swing. And in this case, if you watch Thomas, he does it pretty perfectly, but we're going to be finishing kind of at this left shoulder if you're right-handed. If you're left-handed, of course, it'd be the opposite shoulder. But once I'm setting everything up, if I wanna go down my line, all I need to do is maybe adjust my body a little bit more, but the finish still comes to here, so I'm back into this ready position. Same thing goes down the middle. Let's try a drill. Um, Jordan's gonna feed me a few balls here. Um, I'm gonna to get to hit a few down the line, a few down the middle, and all I'm practicing is making sure I'm setting up my body properly, getting my paddle head down, and finishing to my targets. Bam. So notice I wasn't hitting those balls incredibly hard. Um, I was hitting those maybe at like 50, 60%. You can add pace as you get more comfortable. But like I said earlier, this is a setup shot. So if it goes for a winner, great. But we are expecting this ball to come back, which is why the finish is so important. Jordan, you got anything? Yeah, no, really good, Kaden. Um, the most important thing, as you can all see, his footwork and creating that space, letting the ball come to the apex is the most important part of this stroke. Obviously the technique is important as well, but if you don't get behind the ball and you don't get that contact nice and out in front, it's gonna be really hard to do this. So that's uh, one of the reasons that makes Thomas Wilson one of the best players in the world. He moves his feet really well. So get out there and keep practicing, work on the shot. It's gonna be a shot that you're going to need, especially at higher levels. And we'll see you in the next video.